All right, quick shave today. We've got the 20102 from some uh, from Omega. It's a long throw, long loft uh, bore brush that uh, some of the tips have split. Um, I've had it actually soaking overnight. Um, I'm going to bring it into my borathon because I I'd like another Omega there. It's a little bit shorter than that one I took out of the borathon. The long handled, uh, the long barber pole handled uh, 201098. No, Fatima, uh, Fatip, Fatip, Testina Gentile. It's the uh, solid bar version that Fatip has, and it shaves so smooth for me. I think I've put a nasset in it before, and I'm sure it's going to be terrific. And this is Queen Anne's Revenge from Black Ship Grooming. A sample I got. And so let me look around for my quarter teaspoon measure. And there we go, just scooped out, about a quarter teaspoon. And this one was pretty soft. Other Black Ship products that I've tried are a little harder. I wonder if he just was able to dry some or cure some for a long time. Some of them he doesn't, or if it's just a percent basis. If he's able to, um, if he dries them all the same and just some cure at different rates based on the, uh, the fragrance or essential oils that he uses, I don't know. Got a little bit of a pineapple note to it. I know that is one of the scent notes, and I can, I can smell that. He's going to try to do a quick shave today. Got too tired last night to do one, so I'll try to get it done today in short order so we can head off to church. The Fatip has a a little bit of reputation for blade alignment issues. And while there may be uh, maybe some quality control, you know, points of interest there, it's, I mean, it's, it's like 25 bucks. Um, and so what I usually do, is just set the blade on there, just uh, uh, kind of let it fall. Then I let the base plate fall. I tighten it to uh, kind of where you can start, feel it start to catch. And then I look at it. And it has aligned perfectly. And 50% of the time, roughly, that's what happens. So let's go with it. All right. Uh, I think we're ready to... I just showered, so I'm not going to uh, wet my face. So we're going to... Yep. This a brush at this point, because it's not very broken in. It's only had a few uses. Um, it doesn't have... Uh, tons of water in it, so it didn't have too much to shake out. Let me lower the view there so you get more of the lather bowl and less of my forehead. This brush uh, started out pretty good, but I think maybe I had a dry lather that day, and I think that was masking. Dry meaning relatively dry. It was just a, needed a little bit more water, and it was masking the prickliness of some of the tips. And because the next shave I did with it, I, I definitely felt some prickliness, and kind of made me think that I didn't know if the brush, the blade, or razor was irritating my skin, or if it was the the brush. Well, with the water that was left in the brush, as you can see, we've kind of stirred up a, you know, reasonable looking lather. Maybe I won't need to put in too much. I've kind of had hit or miss lathers from, uh, from Black Ship. Just recently used, Let's see if I can remember what it was. Thomas 2 is a recent one. Oh, maybe the Calypso was the one I used recently. Either one of those. And they both did pretty well. Seven doubloons. I tried a sample of that one, and that one did really well. Then I tried something else, and it just uh, wasn't quite up to par. Meaning that... Uh, it was just kind of light and airy. Didn't really feel awesome in the fingers. 
did the work. It, made, it laid down a reasonably slick layer, but there, there were just, you know, kind of so many uh, other soaps that do better, you know. Okay. I am going to leave this guy a little drier than usual. He looks, you know, pretty good if I'm going to kind of leave it dry, drier. That might be just right. And I'm in a hurry, so roll. So we've got about a day and a half of growth today. This razor is noted to be a mild one, but it's, and it is, and it's smooth, but it's not going to have a problem with, I think I've shaved with it with five days of growth, and it's just not a big deal. People like to even go so far as to buy aggressive open comb razors to knock down multiple days of growth. And that's up to them, but I don't think you need to do that if you don't want to. I feel sorry for somebody who goes out and buys an extra open comb when they really can't afford it based on, you know, people's advice. I'm going to add a little bit more water to this because, you know, once you get it on your face, you can really start to feel the lather and know what you should do. Feels good, brush. I can feel just a little bit of prickle, but by leaving the lather a little drier, it really helps. I wonder, you know, I went to the Maggard's website for this brush before I bought it. It's used. Um, and I checked out the comments, and so many people say this is a really soft brush. And uh, I don't know, do, I wonder if they shave with such dry, under-hydrated soaps oh man how smooth is that wonder if they shave with the soaps that are just so thick meaning they need more water they need more slickness um they don't know the difference between a prickly brush and a and a really smooth one i mean i, I guess that's as long as they feel good about the shades they're getting you know i guess that's fine Man, this is just, I, in the introductory period where I was using this razor for the first time, I think I actually laughed when I was using it because it was just so smooth. That I thought, why in the world aren't more people using these razors and why is this one only available for Roughly $25. Well, people just don't know about them. I think the, uh, there have been some, I've heard some plating issues where the plating has come off a little bit, you know. Now, I own several of these guys. And I haven't had any plating issues yet, but. And then the alignment, you know, is sometimes tricky. And so I guess that's why, but but still, I think it's worth a uh, worth a risk, especially uh, especially because this is a uh, brass razor at the core. And so, if you want to strip the finish, the plating off of this guy, and have a a brass razor that shaves really really well, you can. And you don't have to worry about plating issues. And rinse.
slather is feeling great in the rinse. Nice secondary slickness. That water is just making it come alive. And uh, just a luxury feel for sure. Quarter teaspoon is plenty of lather. I could back off, do a little bit less than a quarter teaspoon and still be fine. So uh, with bore brushes, in case you're kind of new to them, they do require break-in. They are very stiff at first. Uh, you've got to soak them for, even, even when you're not breaking them in, you need to soak them for at least three minutes, is my opinion, before the shave because they absorb water. So they'll be super stiff if you just start with them fresh. And then through the shave, they'll absorb water and you'll notice them getting uh, softer. But it's best just to soak them beforehand. But in the introductory period, before their tips split, because that's what's going to happen, that's when they get soft. It's when those tips split. Now, when does that happen? Maybe a month down the road. Some brushes I've heard with some Omegas a couple of years down the road. So you can have kind of crappy, prickly shaves until then. All right. Some of them take just a few weeks to get comfortable, like most of the Samogs that I have. I like the Zeniths. They're really soft, kind of like the uh, Samogs. Some brushes uh, have treated uh, hair where they've been bleached. Um, not bleached like a, a badger to, uh, to get the tips to gel or be soft. Um, but bleach just to change the color. I think they, the companies think that some people uh, prefer a less natural color, something cleaner looking, you know. And that's three passes. Super comfy and slick. And I can lay down a little bit of lather that way. My little touch-up pass. Uh, this is a soap that's actually not giving me very much scent uh, during the shave here. It's really, really subdued. I can smell a little bit of pineapple, and I'm sure there's some, there is some other stuff in there, so I'm not getting... Well, I'm just shaving with a pineapple soap. There are definitely other pieces in there, but it's so faint, I can't really pick them up. I mean, it's pleasant, but uh, I, don't, I guess I'll pass on this one. Um, all right, well, let me rinse, final rinse. Man, I've got a really nice cut right here. These are really close. I don't see any hairs with any length on them at all. Just tips, and that is good for me because I can't go against the grain. Um, and I've got a couple of passes left over, and that was just terrific. A nice, uh, luxurious feel in the shave. So this may not have given me very much in terms of scent, but the, um, uh, but the performance was terrific, and it was a good time to use this brush uh, because keep it run this lather just a little drier helps to um, protect your skin against the prickle from uh, some of these uh, bores as they're working their way towards softness. So with a bore, the tips will split and then the, uh, I'm I like to shake it out inside the sink. That way it doesn't splash anywhere. So that's what it looks like after you shake it out. Um, let's see, we can even see a couple of the tips that have kind of already... Uh, started splitting. I've got a, this is a little shorter loft than the, uh, that 10098 that I was using. And so I actually thought I'll, I'll go ahead and give this guy a few shaves. Um, if he stays kind of long and he, like when you're, when I was uh, loading the other one, loading some soap, then this, the tips would kind of stay in the middle of some of my soap containers. And I don't really like that. Really hard to gather up soap in that case. And and then combine that with the fact that it was it was not all that comfortable and it would probably take years to get comfortable and I just took it out of my rotation. I may bring it in every once in a while. So then this is what it looks like after you strop it. You pretty much want to do that with every brush, not just bore brushes. Just get that water out. We don't want mildew and stuff to happen inside the knot. We'll set him aside. And uh, there are accelerators to help your bore break in quicker, but I want those tips to split in the best way possible. And I uh, sometimes things split just in general, um, not in the best ways, in the wrong tracks, if you will, if you try to do things suddenly. So I'm not gonna try to do some 
uh, fridge soak for three days, a hair dryer, um, anything like that. Okay. Well, that was a good shave. Man, that was good. Is that some... I didn't even get all of the soap lathered up into into my lather. So that was functioning with even less uh, soap than I, I put in. So what a, what a great, uh, and I think I've remembered that now about Black Ship. You don't, it, it's a little goes a long way, and so that's good for your money. So roughly a quarter teaspoon, but we know not as much was used. And one and a half teaspoons of water is all it took for today. You know, the soap treated my skin really well and the smoothness of the razor as well. So I feel like let's use a, an alcohol splash. This is cool from Arco. Kind of has that blue scent that you might remember from Aqua Velva. If you've been shaving long, show it to you here. Arco is a good, uh, inexpensive uh, soap, most notably used in stick form. And they do, it does come in pucks, but uh, this is what I wish, what I remember Aqua Velva smelling like long ago. I like it a lot. And I've had very little um, stinging with the alcohol splash, so that tells me my technique was good and the razor and blade treated me kindly. Man, that's a nice shave for such a cheap razor and it is lifetime qual quality with the brass, even if the plating wears off or something like that. It's a tremendous value. If you're a college shaver on the cheap, maybe a Gillette Tech or uh, uh, the Fatip, I think is a terrific low cost razor that will last you forever longer than you'll be alive all right so uh, I have my quarter teaspoon measure here that I've got to uh, clean up rinse out from the soap if you don't have a, a measure what I do is use the back of my thumbnail to, to scoop some out and I because my the quarter teaspoon measure is a little bit bigger but almost the size of my thumbnail and so then that can help me approximate uh, a good amount to use and of course with a sample you can err on the side of using too much and uh, but I like to use the scoop because it helps me to really get more out of my samples some people uh, another great way to do samples is to have a loading bowl that you like to use that is or an empty tub container and press the whole sample into the bottom and then you can just load as if it were a tub of soap with just a little bit left in it and so that's a good way too all right so i'm going to take my nasset blade press it down i like to tap uh, tap it on my washcloth over there and then flip it over tap again just to kind of remove the moisture that's all i do to my blades after use all right uh, i'm going to clean up the rest of my gear be back all right well there we go the queen Anne's revenge was a great soap base but not a very strong smeller. So if you've got a mild tendency towards soaps, if they, uh, if the stronger ones irritate you in some way, then this might be a good one to go with if, uh, if this is an indicator of how much the real tub will smell. <clears throat> Sometimes I have discovered some samples that weaken over time faster than normal tubs of soap. And so it uh, could be that you get the soap in and it's just a little stronger. I've definitely had that happen with some sterling samples and some, I uh, can't remember specifically uh, other ones, but it's, it's happened. Oh, uh, Wickham, Wickham. I uh, had a sample, smelled great. So much I liked it, bought the tub. I think it was Russian leather or Irish fern. Got it in and it was super strong. Now here's the good news with those particular ones. I just left them open for a little while, let a little bit of the edge, the top edge of the scent dissipate. And now I like those a lot. And so I was happy that I almost sold them. And so I think I learned my lesson there. If it's a little too strong off the tub, just leave it open for a little while and that can help you out. Speaking of helping you out, I hope this video has helped you out. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves, finishing in record time, even with a bowl lather. Uh, I'm starting to like this brush uh, reasonably well. I'm encouraged by all the split tips that I see. I'm hoping that continues. I'm gonna put it through wet dry cycles, meaning just use it every few days, you know, and uh, give it an eye, 
uh, with the Borathon brushes, I did soak them for one to three hours before each use. And so for the first maybe 20 uses, I'll try to do that with this brush too, just to have it on equal footing with the rest of the brushes that I'm gonna compare it with. But it'll take a little while to get him uh, up to speed. All right, well, there we go. Uh, this is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and uh, you take care. It's been a good shave today, man. That Fatip always makes me happy when I use it, and I had a nice lather to go with today. And now I've got good smells for the next few hours. You take care. Bye.